Hello and welcome to the session Event Enable Your Local SAP Systems. My name is Peter Kreinsesti and I'll be uh, your host for this session. First of all, a bit about me. Uh, I'm basically, I've been working with development since 1998, integration since 2003, and yeah, then governance and APIs and then uh, EDA in the last couple of years. I always say I, I'm, I do everything from support to developer architecture and strategy advisor. So yeah, I do a little bit of all of it. And, and today I'll be hopefully uh, enlightening you a bit about what uh, we can do with events in SAP. Before uh, showing you, I'll just talk a bit about what events are in SAP. Then I'll just look into uh, the architecture for the solution, which we've developed to get these events out of SAP. Uh, then we'll talk about how we can leverage these uh, standard events from SAP. And I will hope to do a live demo of how we do this. And finally, I'll wrap it all up. Okay. First of all, what are events in SAP? Always like to say that are these kind of, uh, uh, starting up, let's go through the use cases. I mean, the, the, the cool thing about SAP is that you have these kind of, uh, uh, yeah, events inside SAP, like uh, new credit rating, you want this event to be sent to the event mesh, you want to block sales and CRM, block delivery. So, so these events are actually quite important that you send out. And that's why we think that enabling SAP events is quite important. That also goes for master data. SAP is often your master data system. So when something happens in your CRM system, you should uh, send it out. Or when you do campaigns, for because again, you need to send the events out to event mesh, and then you can update the CRM system, product catalog, and so forth. So again, I think there are very, uh, there's a lot of use cases for events in SAP, uh, but uh, in general, there are two types of events in SAP. There are change pointers, and then there's business events. If we look at the first part, then change pointers is something which we have in SAP where we actually listen to changes on field and send the event about this. This means that, uh, for instance, if you have a, uh, a change pointer like MADMAS, then you have some fields that you want to listen to, uh, either LADAS, BRAS, MARK, all these fields you can see where I've marked it. Then if they are changed, then a change point occurs and an event will be sent out. Okay. The other things are business events. SAP has lots of standard workflows inside or custom workflows inside SAP. And whenever something occurs in these, then you actually have a business event. There's, this could be the create account in the document. This could be changing the document. It could be a clearing, uh, reverse clearing. Uh, it could also be create an equipment. It could also be, I don't know, uh, create material uh, of the business part, of all these things. And these can be uh, you know, completed via the GUI. It could be completed via the new Fury apps. It can also just be an API, which is exposed. When you call that in, then it will activate this uh, flow. So again, these two events are possible in SAP. And I think the cool thing is that there are so many SAP events and you should be able to leverage these. To put this in another way, I always like to say that change pointers are reactive. We react to changes in the table database, uh, in, in, in the database, whilst business events are more event-driven where we look at when an event occurs, then we go out there, okay? So these are the two uh, main types of events in SAP. And why do I think we should do this? I think there are four good reasons to why we should utilize uh, SAP events. The first is that you have agility, because if you have this, you can listen to what exit events, you can push them to one endpoint, and you can avoid uh, unnecessary custom code. Again, you don't need to do any kind of app of development to push the data out. You can just make sure that you utilize the events as they are. I also think that if you use events from SAP and expose these, you're able to have a better user experience because you're able to make sure if you send the events out to, for instance, to, to Solus, you can have a much better audit of whatever has occurred inside SAP, also inside SAP. You can have real-time responsiveness across your web, uh, IT infrastructure, and you can do event driven behavior in all your apps outside. So I, that's why I think you will have better user experience. Also like to say that the resiliency of your application will be much better. I like to think of, um, how do you say, when you do event driven, you're more, you're, you're going from loosely coupled to decoupled because you don't really know what's going on there. You're just sending to event mesh and then the event mesh will make sure the event goes to the right system. So I think that's very important. And I also think the thing that you can protect your SAP system, uh, that means that you don't need to expose it to all kinds of, um, how do you say, outside the firewall, but you are hidden behind the event mesh. I think that's cool. And that's also, I think the last point about scaling and failing independently is very cool because 
is a peak in scale and just handle connecting to the event mesh. We don't need to know what happens on the other end because when the when they fail or scale, that's not what our problem. And finally, of course, is the low cost. I think the cool thing is that you don't need to be polling anymore. Uh, you're sending it out and, and it's being pushed to whoever gets the data. And you can reuse all these events because uh, again, you don't need to think about adding when a new system is added that also needs to get an event related to, for instance, a custom change or a material change or price change then you can just make that, uh, how do I say, uh, subscribe to the event mesh. So, and finally, of course, the most important part is that you want to leverage whatever you've built on your SAP side. So what was the thought behind Boomi Access SAP? Uh, where we go to for this is, of course, what I said in the middle, the leveraging of the SAP events. And, but also this is a no-code solution. We wanted it to be able for, a, 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 how do I say, a, since integrator to be able to drag and drop and, and create the, the data which we need to send out to the events and then expose the events to the event mesh. And also we want to be able to communicate via open APIs, means that we want to use non-proprietary uh, protocols and, and enable them to be reused across this network. And this gives us the following architecture. Um, this is not, it's not relevant for this demo. Right now we're looking at the Boomi Access Core, but we have the possibility to create a table views and TDS views. Basically, whenever you have a table in SAP, whenever you have a view in SAP, whenever you have a TDS view in SAP, you're able to expose that function as a REST service. There's a lot of other things, like you can also expose function modules and all your BBW uh, to that sort of world. But I think this is the one which we will go into because the cool thing is that whenever you have an event in SAP, you were able to couple this with the table views. This means that if, for instance, you have an event related to material master, then you can connect this to a table service is handling specifically that table data, or that could be Mara, it could be Mac, whatever you want to be part of the event being sent out, you can make sure it's, it's, it's locked to. And you don't need to send it to Boomi like we do here. It can be sent directly to an event broker such as Solace directly. And that I, what I'll be able to show you soon in the how do I say, um, in the demo, just in a minute, minute. Okay, cool. First of all, I want to be able to talk about, uh, before showing the demo, I want to show to about how we leverage these events. And as you see here, if you look at SAP and in the, back, back, in the app app stack, we have a lot of standard events, uh, which uh, as we talked about earlier, and then we have a lot of customers. And what we like about doing it with this uh, SAP events and using the current ones there is we don't need to spend time having a data capture tool to get the data out of SAP. We actually able to capture them in the application layer, which is always the fastest way to do when you're inside SAP. And again, then we are using the business logic in SAP. You don't need to think up something new, develop something new. You're using what's there already. And also you're able to utilize the change point in the business events of SAP. I mean, this is complex, but uh, we're actually able to use this in a very simple way instead of uh, doing it via uh, some custom events or uh, hard uh, up code and all that. And we don't want to use IDOCs because IDOCs are very complex, even though you can say IDOCs can be set up to listen to change pointers in SAP. They are very cumbersome. They have a lot of fields and it's not necessarily all what we need to show. So instead, what we have is we want to be able to send all these events out to uh, be our, our access tool. So what we do is we can able to send the events out either with metadata, uh, where we can send out before and after values, we can, and all we can send it with the payload where we have the table source, which I will show you in a bit. And we can of course send this to a subscription to uh, Solus directly, and then we can define topics on this. And this means that we'll be able to send out relevant parameters and topics, including dynamic headers. And this leads us to a, our demo because I think that's what you want to see. That's the most important part of this uh, session. So let's go there. First of all, uh, in order to, to do something, this is actually, I've logged on to uh, Boomi Access for SAP. This is residing inside SAP system. As you can see here, I have a S4H system. Uh, this is my client. Uh, this is my username. So I'm actually logged on to SAP. This is just another UI residing inside SAP's application, uh, web application. Okay, 
before sending out events, I need to be able to join a table because this is the thing I want to uh, expose. So for this demo, I want to be able to uh, expose business partner data. And as you know, it resides in a table. I also want to uh, send out some addresses, which is in another table. I want to send out the addresses, which is in yet another table. And then I want to send out emails, which is in another table again. So now I have four tables here. And you see, I want to join these. So when I click partner, I can see I can join it with partner. When I click address number, I can join it with address number. And of course, then I can join this address number. This is it. Now I actually join the tables. I can filter if I want to and not send out all the fields in the table service. But instead, I want to have every field because I think it's relevant for the, the, uh, the event mesh that they get as much data as possible. So now I configure the service. I will call this uh, BP for business partner. And then I call it summit demo. So this is my service. I can, of course, do this production way. Then I'll put it in a transport and put it into QA system, mm -hmm. pre process system, and then production. But for this demo, I'll just do a local. So this is it. I've now created a table service, which I'm able to call, which will give me this data. Again, right now, the reason why I'm doing this is I want to show this in an event. So the next step is I want to go to the event. And now I want to send out the data related to a business partner. Events, you can see here, I could choose between change pointers. Here, I will browse through all change pointers with there, which would be if I want to send out some MapMas change pointer, then I could do like this and then start uh, sending this out. This is this shows the MapMas change pointer. As you can see, it has a lot of fields, which is listened to. As I said before, it's reactive. A MapMas change pointer is actually reactive to this table and this field. If that changed, it will send out. For this demo, as I just stated earlier, we will actually be doing a um, looking at the business partner. So I will go into the business partner, which I know is here. I could have just searched for it if I wanted to, because I, but as you can see, the naming bus 1006 doesn't really, not, not everybody knows SAP like, uh, like experience do. So sometimes it's nice to just be able to browse through the uh, to, uh, field structure, but you can do however you want to. When I click business partner, I can see there are a lot of events and I can choose between real time and batch. Right now I want to show real time. And what I want to listen for is whenever a business partner has changed. I could choose all three if I wanted to do that, or as I do now, only one. And you can do one for each if you want to, okay? Then I want to again set, as I said before, we have production, we have local, and I want to be able to, to set this out. Um, and I'll do this in the local uh, place. What we then can do is, I go in now and then I can create a new receiver, or I can choose between what we have here. What we have here is the ability to send out to a booming system and actually a solid system. So now, as you can see, the host is actually a solid cloud because we're sending the messages directly to the solid cloud. So this is it. I will click next. And now I need to create an, a subscription. For this one, I will again call it BP Summit, and I will call it Payload. And here, I will then choose, instead of having event, again, here we actually have three options, event only, event metadata, and event payload. For this session, I will choose event payload because I want to send out the data from the table service, the table service, which I just created. So I will find BP Summit Demo, which I just created. And then I will make sure, what you can see down here is actually the event bus 1006 change has one key field, which is partner to this field, but part, uh, part 000. So I now need to join this with the table service, which I'm creating here. So like this, now I'm joined it. So this means that every time this event occurs, I will call this table service with the ID from partner and get the relevant data out, okay? And now I will create a topic for this. I will call this BP Summit um, Topic. And again, I relate this to the table service which I just created, which I called Summit Demo. Now I'm able to create a, a topic, which you know for, for Solus, this is, uh, this is uh, how do we call it, a topic with, uh, uh, how to say, slashes in the middle. So what I do first is I like 
to you something called uh, or to, to, to tell the, the world where I'm coming from. And luckily, we have three types of topic positions, system, text, and values. Systems gives you access to the system variable on SAP. So this means now I'm able to, to take, take everything from the sys, uh, system variables uh, and, and send this out to, uh, to the event mesh. Here, I know one of the things I always like to do is the subsystem ID. This means that whenever I call this now, I will be sending out S4H so they know that, so uh, Solus knows, okay, this is where it's coming from. I can have a text and I will call this, this is just a string, but again, I'll call it BP Summit because it's nice for the, the event members to know that this is related to the BP Summit. And then finally, I'm actually able to create a dynamic header. In this, I could choose it to be related to everything. I'm choosing partner, but of course, as you know, I could also choose from address field and I don't know, it might be relevant to have the city code or the country or whatever. Uh, but but for this one, I always like to put the ID in, uh, whether that's well or not, that's up to you. But actually, and I can add a lot of topic positions if I want to. For this demo, I'll just create these three. Okay. That's it. Now I create a description and I'm actually done. This took me, I don't know, five minutes to be able to make sure that my SAP systems is able to send out uh, business part of data whenever somebody does a change. And to show you, I'm not kidding. I will now log on to the system. I will connect and I'll listen to any changes coming into uh, Solus for this. Then I'll go in and I'll change the person. And yes, I've already logged into SAP. Uh, do not spend too much time with that. And I will do a change for Peter. I will call him Peter instead of Peter Jr. because I'm not junior. I'll press save. And as you can see over here, I actually get out an SOH with the topic BP Summit, where the ID, and again, if you look at my SP system, this is the ID, so that's correct. It will send out event ID, this is from SAP. Every event in SAP has a unique ID, so you can identify it always. So you can see it's system, client, event ID, and then the data. And in the data, you will have the table service, which I just connected to. So here I will have a lot of things like uh, sort one, sort two, again, sort one, sort two. That's actually there. You can go through it and you can find out, I don't know, that's a lot of data in here. That's my name. Uh, that's my personal number. Uh, this is the test system, so it's not my real personal, just, just so you know. Of course, um, and you can go through, as you see, I'm going to send all this out. So now I'm actually having everything out. Uh, and that's it. That was how fast it was. And again, I can do the same for another type of event. Basically, I'll do it for the same one because why not? Uh, but this time I'll show you what's in the metadata. So this means I'll go to the business partner. I will do real time. I'll do changed. I will do locally. Again, as I've just told you, I will still be sending it to Solus. But this time I will do it for this and I will call this BP Summit and now metadata for. Uh, so they can see its metadata. I will create a new topic for this. BP Summit Meta. And now I only have two types of info. So I will put in this ID again because I still think this is very relevant to have in the topics. And then I will be able to add text and I will call this metadata. I'll press create. So now I've created one where I get out the metadata. I'll create subscription. That's it. That's done. And now again, I can send out the metadata. So as you saw, this was one I had before. I will go back and now I will do another change for Peter. I'll call him Peter Jr. because that's my name now. And first of all, we get the first topic out, which was the S4H BP Summit. Uh, this is one which you just told, uh, saw, but also the metadata. Here you'll get in there and oh, no changes was done. Let's try to do this again. Uh, oh, did I do a change? I didn't change anything relevant for this one. So now I will instead do a change regarding uh, down here, Peter Senior, like this. And as you see here, I'll go into it now. 
then you should be able to see that I have changed it from sort to uh, senior to, um, here we go, S4H change pointer uh, is coming in here. And you can see they're using the impeded uh, Kreiner and yeah, uh, and the changes will, will come in here as well. So this is how it works um, with the metadata. Well, you're able to see all values, new values and, and everything coming in. Cool. Going back to the presentation, um, what you just saw was the demo here. Um, and what we went through was this. Uh, we have a business event uh, or a change pointer and user defined events. We are using the event framework. We are, we are able to identify a receiver and send it out to a PopSat Cloud, either without anything or with payload or with metadata. So that's what we're sending out. And if we send out the payload, then we call the access service for payload. And that's being sent out to the PopSat Cloud. And then we do this, then we are actually able to call an access service back if you want to, but normally we just send out the events to the PopSat Cloud and then we can handle it from there. So again, this is all done. It's also possible actually to do initial load. So we're able to say, if you have a, a service to create it, we can say initial load, and then all the data in SAP is sent out via the same framework to the same producer. So that's how we can initialize the event mesh. So once we create a service, we can start it up, initial load it, and then activate all changes. Okay? So that's where we are. So in summary, what have you seen today? I think this is what we've seen today. Um, the important part of this is that your local SAP system has many events that are change pointers, the business events, and both are equally important, and they are all relevant for the other systems. And what I showed you was you don't need custom code to enable these, they are all standard events. And you don't need to build custom code to polling or polish events, you can use all these standard tools. It took, how long did it take me? Five minutes or something like that to be able to, to enable uh, these events to, uh, uh, to to Solace. That's how fast it goes. It is possible. I also think that if you do this, it takes minutes and it's no code solution. I know I, I will not tell you here now that you will be able to do everything no code, but of course you will of course need developers to to help you expose uh, SAP data. But you can do maybe 50, 80 percent. You can do with a no code solution, and then you can make sure that your developers spend time on the right to things and not on the trivial things. The, the, the third thing I think is important to state is that when you're sending events out to, to PubSub, you don't need to think about the endpoints in Solace. I think that the cool thing about this is, uh, event mesh is that it's so decoupled. So you, uh, you don't need to think about other endpoints, you just need to send it to there and then let Solace handle it from here. There it's, Solace is able to send it to other systems or whatever. So I like the fact that you decouple both from a uh, performance point of view and from a secure point of view. Finally, I think that utilizing pops up, as we talked earlier, it enables a better user experience because it was real time. You saw how fast whenever I did a change in SAP, it actually goes directly to Solus. And then from there, we can uh, do a vendor and behavior for all your UI. So I think this is um, how we do it. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we're done. Uh, I know that we'll be having a live chat soon. So if you have any questions, you will be able to, to send, uh, talk to me in, in this one, and then I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.